everybody, it's Brandon Luna with Luna Cigar Reviews on YouTube, and I just wanted to let you know that uh, I'm the same Brandon Luna from Clipso Cigar Review Podcast, so if you're familiar with that show, you're familiar with me. Also, do check out our new show, Cigars and Cinema. That show is going to be on YouTube, but only in an audio version, and you can listen to it weekly over on iTunes, iHeartRadio, Podcast Breaker, Stitcher, all that stuff. But, you know... While we ended the Calypso Cigar Review, um, I still like doing cigar reviews, so I wanted to keep this going just on the YouTube channel, just by myself, just to kind of keep testing my palate, keep bringing that information to other people who have curiosity about certain cigars that they haven't smoked yet, or just to see if my palate matches theirs. Today, I'm reviewing something that I got over at the IPCPR show this year. It is the Undercrown, oh, look at that, look at that, it's the Undercrown Shade, and I love how they named this cigar it was really smart. They didn't go underground Connecticut because I think Connecticut for Drew Estate people might have a negative connotation. I don't know. It just seems like they like a lot of full-bodied stuff and to call it just a, a shade instead of a Connecticut is probably a wise move for those uh, Drew Estate fans. Uh, so the blend on this, uh, wrappers, Ecuadorian Connecticut shade obviously, uh, the blinder is a Sumatra and the filler is a combination of Dominican and Nicaraguan Creole 98 and a little bit of Nicaraguan Criollo. So, I've got to tell you, the blend is actually very similar to some other cigars out there. Um, not a very, not very different. Uh, the difference, really, that I see on this blend compared to one specifically that I know of that I smoke on a regular basis is that binder. It's that Sumatra binder. So I'm curious to see how much that changes the overall flavor of this cigar. Uh, I was a big fan of uh, Drew State for a long time. I smoked it all the time. I could say I was a uh, you know, Drew State whore or a legal whore, I guess is what they call it. And I kind of trailed off on it, but it, it'd be nice to revisit the brand and, and see how it's doing and uh, see what they're doing different, which is cool. I always love it when brands kind of step out of their comfort zone and they try different things. That, to me, just shows growth. It shows growth for the industry. It shows growth for that brand. And uh, it's just cool. You know, it's just cool to do that, to offer something different to your customers, to keep them interested in the brand. Uh, I'm actually not at my house this, this time. I'm actually out in Kansas, Wichita, Kansas right now, at a, kind of a sketchy hotel. And, uh, but you know, they have a patio, so I'll take a sketchy if I get a patio and I can smoke there. Bing! Bonus. So, I'm going to give this a uh, cut and a light, and I'll let you know what I think after the first third. It has a nice little foot band there, if you can see that. The video's not that great. Let's see if I can shade that so you can see the word shade. Oh, look, it actually worked. I love it. And you've got the uh, underground logo, which is a really cool kind of representation of that logo that's uh, very iconic now. I've seen people with this logo as a tattoo, which I think is ridiculous, but hey, more power to you if you want to brand your body with a cigar brand. Go for it. Yeah. Smells like Ecuadorian Connecticut shade. A little bit of sweetness to it. A little bit of hay smell. Uh, shoving cigars up my nose. What a great pastime. Now, this was actually blended by Willie Herrera, and it's his first opportunity to step outside of blending for his own brand. So I'm very excited to try this. I love what Willie's done with the uh, Herrera's Delee line, and uh, I'm very, very curious this, to try this. So I'm going to go ahead and give it a cut and light, and let you know what I think. All right, so I'm pretty into the first third here on the Underground Shade, and I wanted to give you a little update. So first off, look at that ash. That ash is really pretty. It's nice white ash. Uh, I don't know if it's going to focus on that or not, but I uh, probably won't. But the ash is very beautiful. Uh, it's holding on like a champ. And um, that just speaks to very, very good construction. Looking at the cigar, it's a little veiny. Um, you know, it's, it's a little toothy. Um, it's an undercrown. You know, you don't expect it to be Liga quality um, since it's an undercrown. So there is some pretty prominent veins, but, eh, you know, veins don't bug me as long as they don't get in the way. As long as there's not stem in there jumping out or something, I'm fine. Uh, but it is a very pretty cigar. It's a nice, it's a beautiful wrapper. And it's got a lot of character to it. I love the band and how the band accents the, the color of the wrapper. Um, that's kind of a risky thing, you know, because if they end up doing another batch and the wrapper changes or something changes with the wrapper, that band might look a little off. But right now, it's a, a very good match for the actual wrapper that they have on this cigar. It's really pretty. So one thing I did notice right off the bat on the cold draw was a certain amount of sweetness. And I was very surprised by that. It almost seemed like it was sweetness, the sweetness that you would get from like a, uh, a sweetened cap or something, but I don't think that's what they did. I just think it may be from the actual Connecticut Shade wrapper that they're using. 
I, I don't know. I, I, I wasn't there when they made it. I have no idea. But it does seem like it's a sweetened tip on that. It, it does dissipate very quickly, so it probably is just the wrapper that has that sweetness. When you pull on it in the cold draw, you're automatically getting a good amount of cinnamon and a little bit of toastiness. So, cinnamon toast crunch. You know, cinnamon toast crunch on the cold draw. It's not real prominent. It's not like you put a piece of cinnamon toast crunch in your mouth before milk and got that, you know, blast of cinnamon and, and breadiness. It's not that, but it is very cinnamony and very kind of bready, and it's uh, tasty. So on the light up, um, after the first couple of puffs, very surprised at how um, medium bodied it was. Right off the bat, it was pretty medium bodied. Um, wasn't very mild. I was expecting it to be milder. You get a good amount of pepper, uh, but the pepper is more of a mild, light pepper. It's not like uh, black pepper. It's maybe more white pepper, I guess. Uh, right through the retrohale, you get that pepper. You also get a little bit of uh, citrus through the retrohale, which you know Willie did very well with the Herrera Esteli. So I think that might be a signature trying to get that Cubanesque flavor into his cigar. So it does have that citrus note. It's almost more of a uh, Instead of like a orange citrus, it's more of a lemon citrus, like lemon, uh, lemon grass or whatever the hell you want to call it. But you know, it's just very lemony. It's very citrusy and lemony. Um, on the actual smoke, as you bring it in your mouth, um, like so, it has a, a great amount of flavor to it. It's it's got some nuttiness to it. It's got a little bit of earthiness, a little bit of cedar. It's tasty. Um, it's weird because. Because of the retrohale, it feels medium, but the flavors that you get on your palate are mild. So I'd say it's mild to medium at this point through the first third. The medium comes from the retrohale. If you don't retrohale it, if you're just pulling it in and pushing it out, it's probably going to be pretty mild to you. So for those of you that do like more full-bodied cigars, if you love the Undercrown, if you love the Ligas, but you want to try this, definitely retrohale. Definitely take the time to push that smoke through your nose so you can experience more of the nuances of the cigar and get more flavor and get more spiciness. Without that retrohale, it's not very spicy. It's very mild and almost bland. So definitely take in the whole experience and retrohale this cigar. You will thank me for it. So I'm going to come back after I'm done with the first, or after I'm into the second third, and we'll talk about the rest of this cigar. All right, so I'm into the second third here of the Undercrown Shade, and I gotta say it's a tasty, tasty cigar. Definitely medium. Uh, wouldn't say anything beyond like a mild medium. Uh, you get that medium again, like I said, with the retrohale. So definitely retrohale it. Uh, not overly complex, but I didn't expect that from an Undercrown. Undercrowns have always been one of those cigars that is uh, kind of one note, but it's a good note, and I think that's kind of where this is too. Definitely a lot of nuttiness there. Uh, the citrus has kicked in a little bit more. It was always kind of there as an underlying tone, but now it's really kind of kicked in. Uh, but yeah, definitely tasty. And look, again, each uh, ash that you get on this will last about an inch. Um, after about an inch, you want to probably tap it off, just unless you want to wear it. That's up to you. I prefer not to wear my ash. So I would definitely recommend tapping it after about an inch, or a little bit before maybe, just to be on the safe side. Um, and as I was smoking this, I was reminded of my recent trip to the Dominican Republic. I just ashed on my laptop. Fun. So, um, i got to say, when you experience what it's like to actually go through the process of making these cigars, it really widens your, your knowledge of cigars. It widens your experience of smoking a cigar. It just really takes it to the next level. Uh, I happened to be in Santiago, Dominican Republic, over at the PDR factory for a couple of days last week, and I got to sit down at a table, I got to roll some cigars, I got to bunch some cigars, go through the whole process, um, ended up rolling about four or five myself that were pretty smokable, the rest of them not so much, but um, it's just a, it's a hell of a process, man, and it, it very much is an art form, so don't let anybody tell you that a cigar is the same as a cigarette, is the same as uh, something that's machine rolled. This is an art form. It is, it is basically taking something that is grown out of the ground, a natural product, putting love and time into it, and rolling it into something that is fantastic. I mean, it's something that is really life-altering for that time that you're smoking it. If you take the time to sit and enjoy a cigar, really enjoy it, I mean, get all the nuances, you know, sit with a cup of water, don't don't go crazy and drink a Coke or anything like that for the first time you've ever smoked a cigar. Just really take in all the flavors, retrohale, keep it in your mouth for a little bit, move it around your mouth, uh, you know, run your tongue around your, your teeth and everything after you've blown out just so you can get all those flavors. It's, it's such a great experience. It's so relaxing and calming. 
and just a great way to spend time, especially if you're doing it with other people. If you have friends and family that are around that can smoke with you, it's, it's one of the best things in the world. And for people that don't do it and don't understand, you're missing out. I'll just say that. You're definitely missing out because it is something that is very special. And uh, I wouldn't give up this for anything in the world. As much as I smoke on a, on a daily basis, um, it's not the same as sitting down and actually enjoying it. Uh, being a cigar representative, being out there on the, on the floor and, and, and selling cigars every day and smoking them in shops is fun. That part of the job is great. But you don't really ever get the taste of cigar when you're doing that. You're too busy working. You're too busy talking. You're too busy you know, trying to sell your product. I, I think that... If you're not taking the time with a cigar, you're just blowing smoke. You're not really, you know, enjoying the cigar. So I, I really enjoy my time when I, I get to sit down either by myself or with friends and really enjoy a cigar. It's so different, so much of a better experience. So if you're a daily smoker and you're just, you know, you got the yard gars or you got your regular cigars that you smoke every day that aren't really special to you, you know what? Every cigar is special. Take the time to sit down and really smoke it and really, really get everything you can out of it. Because this product is something that took a lot of time to make, took a lot of time to package and to get out to you, and it's not like you know going and getting a burger at McDonald's. It's not like that at all. That is The equivalent of that is probably like a Swisher Sweet, you know, let's be honest. So uh, that's fast food. This is gourmet, baby. This is gourmet right here. So take the time to really enjoy these smokes and uh, get everything that you can out of them and, and talk to other people about it man develop that palate develop those relationships with people and uh, develop your love for cigars so I'm going to take a little break again I'll come back for the final thoughts on this particular cigar the Undercrown Shade stick with me alright so I'm at the end of the Undercrown Shade and it is a tasty cigar totally different than the standard Undercrown so don't go into this expecting to get the same blend as the Undercrown with a different wrapper. That's not what this is. This is a totally new cigar. Definitely has that Willie Herrera flavor profile to it. It's got a little bit of that citrus at the beginning. Trails off pretty quickly. Works its way into some nutty notes and some uh, other things as well. There's some cinnamon notes there. First and second third, if you want it to be a little bit bolder, definitely retrohale it. On the last third, you don't have to do that. It works its way nicely into that medium range. I think this is about seven to nine dollars. So it's definitely uh, worth your while to try it out. I would say that I would smoke it again for sure. I enjoyed my time with it. It's a tasty, tasty smoke, and it speaks volumes for what Drew Estate's doing over there. They're putting out a good quality product. You know you're always going to get something good when you smoke one of their cigars. So definitely give it a go. Don't forget to check out Cigars in Cinema, the new show that Randy and I are doing. We review a movie every week that involves cigars in some way, shape, or form. And then we talk about movie news, entertainment news, and general merriment from Randy and I. I'm probably going to be doing some episodes of that myself just to keep it going. We want to try and do one a week. And both of us are on the road a lot, so it's hard to get together. But there's always a ton of movies to review that involve cigars, so you'll get a different movie each time. And it's a good time. So check it out on iHeartRadio, uh, Spreaker, Stitcher, Podcast Land, iTunes, all those places you can normally find us with Clipso Cigar Review. You'll find Cigars in Cinema. And, you know, stay tuned to this YouTube channel because I'm going to be doing cigar reviews here on a pretty regular basis just because I still want to do those. And I enjoy my time with you guys and smoking a good cigar. So as always, it's been great smoking with you.